Mwananchi. In Kenya today, it's said that 2 billion shillings is stolen every day by the government. The Wenye Inchi, still an equivalent of 2 billion shillings every day. But how does the government steal from itself? In reality, it's stealing from the sovereign, which is you and I who voted the government in. So today I present to you five of the most scandalous economic crimes by the government on its people. I am Jeff Kafka. Government corruption is a cancer that eats away at the very fabric of society. It is a betrayal of the public trust and an abuse of power. When those who hold positions of authority use their power to enrich themselves or to serve their own interests, rather than those of the people they are supposed to represent, it undermines the foundation of democracy. The level of corruption in Kenya is alarming. According to Transparency International, Kenya ranks 124th out of 180 countries in the 2021 Corruption Perception Index. This means that corruption is a pervasive issue that affects every aspect of you, the Mwananchi Ntukufu. Perpetrated by high-ranking government officials, business people, and even international organizations, sometimes done right under the nose of a sitting president and the whistleblowers silenced, often with death. And in most cases than not, no culprits to answer. Too many scandals to count, too little time to rant. I will therefore just cut to the highlight of the top five corruption scandals by the government. One, the Eurobond scandal. This one ranks up high, not in terms of money lost, but in terms of the audacity by the perpetrators to pull it off. In June 2014, the government of Kenya raised debt by floating a 250 billion shillings euro bond. The money was successively credited to the government of Kenya's New York account. It was a great idea by the Uhuru Ruto government then, considering that the debt was for 10 years and relatively cheap at about 6% interest. Out of this, 55 billion was used to pay a previous loan and 35 billion transferred to Kenya, to the exchequer. Then, abracadabra and poof, the balance of 160 million shillings disappeared. The government contradicted itself severely, trying to explain the figures as having been used to support the budget. But the worst is still to come. The 10 year debt matures in 2024. And you, Mwananchi Mtukufu, must brace for the high taxes and low government spending. Two, the Golden Bug scandal. In 1991, Kenyans were clamoring for the first multi party elections that were to be held in 1992. For the first time, the incumbent, Moi, was facing the hardest hurdle in his political career, the opposition. So, to win the elections, he had to line his pockets deep to fund a vigorous campaign. Enter Kamlesh Patni. Kamlesh, the architect, had a blueprint that would see the central bank paying billions to his company, Golden Bug International, billions of shillings for fictitious gold exports. It was the perfect way to get money directly from the central bank to Moy's campaign machinery. Moy would win the election and stay in power for another 10 years. Number three, Anglo leasing scandal. When Kibaki and the Grand NAC coalition took power in 2002, everyone sighed with relief. Mwananchi thought that the old Kanu and Moy days were over, but the feel good moment did not last long. Inside Kibaki's cabinet, and by some of his most trusted lieutenants, there was a skin cookie. The ministers felt that it was their time to eat. 
It involved a series of fraudulent government contracts for security-related equipment and services that were signed with a group of companies called Anglo Leasing and Finance Company Limited. They were to buy equipment at inflated prices and keep the profits, or not buy the equipments at all. Number four, the NYS scandal. Imagine one thief stealing milk from a cow. That's how the first NYS hatched for one billion shillings felt like. Then imagine another thief coming for the whole cow. That was the second haste for 9 billion shillings. In the second term of the Uhururuto government, the cabinet secretary for devolution, where NYS was under, was one Ann Waiguru. She had a poem called Josephine Kafura. It was Waiguru who helped Kafura open several companies and connected her to the who is who in the scam chain. And for the cash cow, the government had launched a slum upgrading project in Kibera. Within a few months, in 2014 and 2015, Kabura's companies were awarded multiple tenders and supplied items at overinflated prices, and the amounts were paid promptly. After the scandal was discovered and amidst public pressure, the CS for devolution resigned. A few scapegoats were arrested, but as usual, all were acquitted. In 2018, it was the same script all over again. This time, the CS for Youth Affairs was the pawn master, and the infamous Gerita family were the pawns. Together with other players, 9 billion shillings was stolen. And number five, Kemsa COVID-19 scandal. Every crisis is a pit, and every crisis is a ladder. So when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, as the rest of the Wananchi sunk into a pit of a health crisis and economic despair, some Wenye Inchi saw a ladder out of the pit and into billions. Simply put, the Wenye Inchi saw an opportunity to exploit the funds meant for the pandemic. The procurement process was unsupervised. The companies that supposedly won the tenders were not even a month old since registration. A good example is Shop and Buy Limited, which the documents allege got tenders worth 1.3 billion shillings despite being formed in February, just weeks before the first case of COVID-19 was reported in the country. There you have it. The five most scandalous cases of the government stealing from you, the Mwenyenchi. If you have any comments or additions as to other scams you'd like us to explore, please feel free to comment. Also, subscribe to the channel and leave a like. Again, at your service, Jeff Kafka.